Hello. And welcome back to Mini Reads. Today we will be summarizing the book Stolen Focus by Johan Hari. Stolen Focus is a thought-provoking and timely exploration of the modern-day epidemic of distraction and its impact on our ability to focus. In a world where we are constantly bombarded with notifications, advertisements, and endless streams of information, our attention spans are under siege, leaving us feeling scattered, overwhelmed, and unable to accomplish the things that truly matter. Drawing on cutting-edge research and personal anecdotes, Hari examines the root causes of distraction and offers practical strategies for reclaiming our focus and living more intentional, fulfilling lives. With clarity, humor, and insight, Stolen Focus challenges readers to rethink their relationship with technology and reclaim their ability to pay attention to the world around them. Chapter 1 Chapter 1 discusses the first cause of our increasing difficulty to concentrate, the increase in speed, switching, and filtering of information in our modern world. Hari argues that technological advancements, particularly the rise of the internet and smartphones, have created an environment of constant stimulation and distraction. The internet has made it possible to access an infinite amount of information at lightning fast speeds, leading to a culture of instant gratification and impatience. This constant barrage of information and the need to filter through it all has led to a decrease in our ability to focus on one task for an extended period. Our brains are constantly switching between different stimuli, making it difficult to sustain attention on any one thing. Hari also notes that the rise of social media and the need for constant communication has further contributed to this culture of distraction. The chapter concludes by emphasizing the importance of understanding the root causes of our lack of focus and attention, and how we can take steps to combat these issues in our personal and professional lives. Ultimately, the solution involves creating an environment that fosters deep concentration and a sense of purpose, while limiting the distractions that pull us away from these goals. Chapter 2 Chapter 2 explores the second cause of our inability to focus, which is the crippling of our flow states. Hari defines flow states as those moments when we become fully immersed in a task, losing track of time and everything else around us. These states are critical to our ability to concentrate, learn, and be creative. According to Hari, there are several factors that contribute to the weakening of our flow states. One of these factors is the rise of multitasking, which is often seen as a badge of honor in our culture. However, multitasking actually impairs our ability to focus by diverting our attention and hindering our ability to enter into a flow state. Another factor that contributes to the weakening of our flow states is the prevalence of distractions in our modern world. Hari cites a number of studies that show how notifications from our phones and other devices can interrupt our flow states and prevent us from fully immersing ourselves in a task. Hari also points to the impact of stress on our ability to enter into flow states. Chronic stress, he argues, can trigger our fight-or-flight response, which in turn can make it difficult to concentrate and enter into a state of flow. Finally, Hari explores the impact of our modern work culture on our ability to enter into flow states. He notes that many workplaces are designed in a way that prevents employees from fully immersing themselves in a task. Instead, they are often forced to switch between different tasks or deal with constant interruptions, which can make it difficult to enter into a flow state and be productive. Overall, Hari argues that our inability to enter into flow states is a major contributor to our difficulty in paying attention and focusing. By understanding the factors that weaken our flow states, we can begin to take steps to strengthen them and improve our ability to concentrate and be productive. Chapter 3 Chapter 3 focuses on the third cause of the attention crisis, the rise of physical and mental exhaustion. The author argues that modern society is facing an epidemic of burnout, which is fueled by several factors, including longer work hours, constant connectivity, and the pressure to always be productive. Hari notes that our bodies and brains are not designed to operate at full capacity all the time, and that chronic exhaustion can have serious consequences for our health and well-being. He describes how the stress of modern life can lead to physical symptoms such as headaches, fatigue, and digestive issues, as well as mental health issues like anxiety and depression. The author explores the ways in which our culture glorifies busyness and productivity, 
often at the expense of rest and relaxation. He argues that we need to reframe our attitudes towards rest and prioritize self-care in order to combat burnout and improve our ability to focus. Hari also delves into the role that technology plays in exacerbating the problem of exhaustion, noting how our constant connectivity can make it difficult to switch off and relax. He suggests strategies for managing our technology use, such as setting boundaries around work emails and social media, and taking regular breaks from screens. Overall, Chapter 3 of Stolen Focus highlights the importance of recognizing and addressing the epidemic of burnout in modern society, and offers practical tips for managing exhaustion and improving our ability to focus. Chapter 4 Chapter 4 explores the fourth cause of our modern-day struggle to focus, the collapse of sustained reading. Hari begins the chapter by describing how our reading habits have changed over time. He notes that in the past, people would regularly read for hours at a time, immersing themselves in books and other long-form writing. However, with the rise of the internet and social media, our attention spans have become increasingly fragmented. We now tend to read short, bite-sized pieces of content, often while multitasking or scrolling through our social media feeds. Hari argues that this shift in our reading habits has had a profound impact on our ability to focus. He cites studies that have shown that reading long-form content can improve cognitive function, memory, and the ability to concentrate. By contrast, our current reading habits can lead to information overload, making it difficult for us to retain information or engage deeply with the material. To further illustrate this point, Hari describes his own struggles with sustained reading. He notes that despite being an avid reader in the past, he now finds it challenging to focus on books for more than a few minutes at a time. He also notes that he is not alone in this struggle and that many people report similar difficulties. Hari concludes the chapter by arguing that if we want to regain our ability to focus, we need to prioritize sustained reading. He suggests that we set aside dedicated time for reading, eliminate distractions, and make a conscious effort to engage deeply with the material. By doing so, we can improve our cognitive function and, in turn, our ability to pay attention. Chapter 5 In Chapter 5, the author discusses the fifth cause of distraction, which is the disruption of mind-wandering. The author explains that mind-wandering is a natural state of the brain where it switches between focused attention and free-flowing thoughts. However, he argues that modern technology and culture are disrupting this natural process, leading to decreased productivity and increased distractibility. Hari cites studies that show that people who spend more time engaged in social media and digital devices have less opportunity for mind-wandering, which can lead to increased stress, anxiety, and depression. He argues that this is because these technologies demand constant attention and prevent the brain from entering the state of restful awareness that is necessary for creativity, problem-solving, and self-reflection. To combat this disruption of mind-wandering, Hari suggests several strategies, including taking breaks from technology, engaging in mindful meditation and other forms of contemplative practice, and engaging in creative activities that allow the mind to wander freely. He also suggests that individuals need to be more aware of their own cognitive processes and learn to recognize when they are getting distracted or overwhelmed. Overall, Chapter 5 of Stolen Focus highlights the importance of mind-wandering as a natural and essential aspect of cognitive function and suggests ways that individuals can protect this state of mind to improve their overall well-being and productivity. Chapter 6, Cause 6, The Rise of Technology That Can Track and Manipulate You, Part 1. In this chapter, Hari explores how technology is increasingly designed to capture and hold our attention, using advanced algorithms to track our behavior and preferences. Hari begins by discussing the rise of social media and how it has transformed the way we communicate and connect with one another. He notes that social media platforms such as Facebook and Instagram have become expert at using our data to target us with personalized ads and content, which can create a sense of addiction and compulsion. Hari then delves into the psychology behind these platforms, explaining how they use techniques such as variable rewards and social validation to keep us engaged. He also examines the role of technology in creating filter bubbles and echo chambers, where we are only exposed to information that confirms our existing beliefs and biases. Finally, 
Hari discusses the ways in which technology is being used to manipulate our behavior and emotions, such as through the use of dark patterns in website and app design. He argues that these techniques are designed to exploit our vulnerabilities and create a sense of powerlessness, ultimately contributing to the growing problem of digital addiction. Overall, Chapter 6 of Stolen Focus offers a comprehensive analysis of the ways in which technology is changing our behavior and manipulating our attention. It raises important questions about the ethics of digital design and the role of technology in shaping our lives. Chapter 7 In Chapter 7, Johan Hari continues to explore the sixth cause of distraction, which is the rise of technology that can track and manipulate us. In the second part of this chapter, Hari delves into the ways in which technology companies use psychological tricks to keep us hooked on their platforms. Hari discusses the concept of variable rewards, which refers to the idea that the uncertainty of a reward is more motivating than a guaranteed reward. This is why social media platforms use features such as likes, comments, and notifications to create a sense of anticipation and keep users coming back for more. The author also explores the ways in which technology companies use algorithms to tailor content to our individual preferences and beliefs, creating what he calls, filter bubbles. This can lead to a polarized and distorted view of the world, where we are only exposed to information that confirms our existing beliefs. Hari argues that these techniques not only harm our ability to pay attention but can also have negative consequences for our mental health and well-being. He suggests that we need to be more aware of how these platforms are designed to manipulate our behavior and take steps to limit our exposure to them. Overall, Chapter 7 of Stolen Focus provides a thought-provoking analysis of the ways in which technology can distract and manipulate us, and highlights the importance of being mindful and intentional in our use of digital media. Chapter 8 In Chapter 8, Johan Hari discusses the seventh cause of our inability to concentrate, the rise of cruel optimism. He defines cruel optimism as, the idea that you are being sold an impossible dream, and it is making you miserable. Hari argues that we are constantly bombarded with messages that we should be able to achieve anything we want, as long as we work hard enough. However, he notes that this optimism is often cruel because it sets us up for failure, making us feel inadequate and hopeless. He cites examples such as the pressure to find our dream job or the expectation to have a perfect body, which can lead to mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. Hari also discusses the impact of social media, which often presents an idealized version of other people's lives, further perpetuating this cruel optimism. He suggests that we need to reframe our expectations and redefine success to include more realistic and achievable goals. This can help us to feel more content and fulfilled in our lives, rather than constantly striving for something that is unattainable. Overall, the chapter highlights the need to be mindful of the messages we receive about success and happiness, and to recognize that these expectations can be harmful to our mental health and well-being. By reframing our goals and expectations, we can work towards a more sustainable and fulfilling way of life. Chapter 9 In Chapter 9, Author Johan Hari explores the idea that the widespread use of ADHD medication may not be the best solution for those struggling with attention issues. Instead, he argues that there may be deeper underlying causes that need to be addressed. Hari begins the chapter by recounting his own experience with ADHD medication and the sense of shame he felt for needing it. He then delves into the history of ADHD diagnosis and treatment, tracing it back to the work of psychiatrist Dr. Russell Barkley. Barkley viewed ADHD as a neurological disorder caused by a deficit in the brain's executive functioning system. This theory led to the development of stimulant medications like Ritalin and Adderall, which could improve focus and attention in those with ADHD. However, Hari argues that this view of ADHD as solely a neurological disorder is too simplistic. He points out that many factors can contribute to attention issues, including trauma, stress, and social and environmental factors. Hari suggests that instead of simply prescribing medication, doctors and researchers should be exploring these underlying causes and addressing them directly. To illustrate this point, Hari profiles the work of Dr. Gabor Mate, a physician who has studied the links between childhood trauma and attention issues. 
Mate argues that many people with ADHD may have experienced traumatic events in their early lives, which can lead to difficulties with focus and attention. Mate's approach to treating ADHD involves addressing these underlying traumas through therapy and other techniques. Hari also highlights other potential solutions to ADHD, including exercise, mindfulness, and changes to diet and sleep habits. He argues that a more holistic approach to ADHD treatment, one that addresses both neurological and environmental factors, is needed to truly help those struggling with attention issues. Overall, Chapter 9 of Stolen Focus suggests that ADHD medication may not be the best or only solution for those with attention issues. Instead, a more nuanced and holistic approach that takes into account a range of factors is needed to truly address the underlying causes of attention difficulties. Chapter 10 In Chapter 10, author Johan Hari explores the eighth cause of our modern focus crisis, the surge in stress and how it triggers vigilance. Hari argues that our brains have evolved to be on high alert in response to threats, but our modern lifestyles have created a constant state of stress that leaves us in a state of perpetual vigilance. This chronic stress and vigilance make it difficult for us to focus on anything else. Hari cites research showing that chronic stress causes changes in the brain, including a reduction in the size of the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for attention and decision-making. He also discusses the ways in which our culture promotes stress, such as the pressure to be constantly connected and productive. Hari suggests that the solution to this problem is to learn how to manage stress and cultivate a sense of calm. He offers practical tips for reducing stress, such as mindfulness meditation, exercise, and spending time in nature. He also emphasizes the importance of setting boundaries and taking breaks from technology to reduce the constant pressure to be productive. Overall, Chapter 10 of Stolen Focus highlights the ways in which chronic stress and vigilance can contribute to our difficulty in paying attention and offers strategies for managing stress and promoting focus. Chapter 11 In Chapter 11, Johan Hari explores how some places have successfully reversed the surge in speed and exhaustion that many people experience in their daily lives. Hari begins by discussing how the Swedish city of Gothenburg implemented a six-hour workday, which resulted in increased productivity, improved work-life balance, and reduced sick leave. He also looks at the Danish concept of huga, which emphasizes coziness, relaxation, and socializing, and how it has contributed to Denmark's status as one of the happiest countries in the world. Hari also examines the slow food movement, which originated in Italy and emphasizes the importance of savoring food and enjoying meals with others. He notes how this movement has helped people reconnect with their food and appreciate the cultural and social aspects of dining. Additionally, Hari explores how some countries have implemented policies to reduce stress and burnout. For example, in Japan, there is a legal requirement for workers to take a certain number of vacation days each year, and the government provides subsidies for companies that implement stress reduction programs. In France, there is a right to disconnect law that gives workers the right to ignore work emails and messages outside of work hours. Overall, Hari argues that these places have been successful in reversing the surge in speed and exhaustion because they prioritize rest, relaxation, and social connection. He suggests that other places could learn from these examples and implement similar policies and practices to improve the well-being of their citizens. Chapter 12 Chapter 12 examines two additional causes of our inability to focus, deteriorating diets and rising pollution. Hari argues that our modern diets, which are high in sugar, processed foods, and additives, are contributing to our lack of focus. These foods are often low in nutrients and can lead to inflammation in the brain, which can impair cognitive function. Additionally, Hari notes that a lack of access to healthy, fresh foods in certain communities can exacerbate this problem. Hari also discusses the impact of rising pollution on our ability to focus. He notes that air pollution, noise pollution, and light pollution can all contribute to cognitive impairment. For example, air pollution has been linked to decreased cognitive function, while noise pollution can cause stress and anxiety, making it difficult to concentrate. Hari argues that addressing these two causes will require systemic changes, such as policies to promote access to healthy foods and measures to reduce pollution. 
He also emphasizes the importance of individual choices, such as making healthier food choices and reducing one's exposure to pollution whenever possible. Overall, Chapter 12 highlights the important role that our diets and environment play in our ability to focus, and emphasizes the need for both individual and systemic changes to address these issues. Chapter 13 In Chapter 13, Johan Hari discusses the rise of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder ADHD, and how we are responding to it. He argues that ADHD is a complex disorder, and the increase in diagnosis is due to various factors, such as changes in diagnostic criteria, increased awareness, and pharmaceutical marketing. Hari questions the effectiveness of medication as a long-term solution to ADHD and suggests that environmental factors and lifestyle changes may be more beneficial. He also criticizes the over-reliance on medication, which can lead to overdiagnosis and overprescription. Hari interviews experts and individuals with ADHD to provide insight into the experience of living with the disorder. He argues that society needs to rethink how we approach ADHD and provide more support and understanding for those who have it. This includes addressing the societal pressures and expectations that may exacerbate symptoms and recognizing the potential strengths and benefits of ADHD. Overall, Chapter 13 of Stolen Focus raises important questions about the diagnosis and treatment of ADHD and calls for a more holistic approach to addressing the disorder. Chapter 14 Chapter 14, Johan Hari focuses on the confinement of children, both physically and psychologically. The author argues that the modern education system, with its emphasis on standardized testing and strict discipline, is leading to the confinement of children's minds and bodies. Hari describes the experiences of several students who have been negatively affected by this system, including a girl who developed anxiety and depression due to the pressure to perform well on exams, and a boy who was suspended from school for not adhering to strict dress code policies. The author also discusses the history of education, arguing that the current model of schooling is a product of the Industrial Revolution, designed to create obedient workers rather than critical thinkers. Hari suggests that a more holistic approach to education, which values creativity, curiosity, and individuality, is needed to free children from the confinement of the current system. He cites examples of schools around the world that have adopted such an approach, with positive results. Overall, Chapter 14 highlights the negative effects of the modern education system on children's well-being and argues for a more flexible and nurturing approach to education. Conclusion in conclusion, Johan Hari explores the reasons behind the increasing difficulty people face in maintaining their focus and attention. Through his extensive research, he uncovers the role of societal and technological factors in this phenomenon, including the impact of social media, multitasking, and the overstimulation of our senses. Hari argues that our attention is being constantly hijacked, leading to a state of constant distraction and an inability to fully engage with our surroundings. He suggests that we need to actively work to reclaim our focus by making conscious choices about how we spend our time and how we interact with technology. Overall, stolen focus serves as a wake-up call to the negative consequences of our current attention economy and offers practical solutions for how to combat this trend. It is a thought-provoking read that encourages us to reconsider our relationship with technology and to prioritize our mental well-being in a world that is increasingly demanding our attention. So, that's all we've got on this book. Stay tuned for more detailed summaries in future. Do leave a like, share and subscribe to our channel for summaries in the future.